Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Doherty. I'm the executive director here at Youth Without Shelter. Uh, welcome to the 34th annual general meeting of Youth Without Shelter. I'll try that again. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is still Steve Doherty, and I'm still the executive director here at Youth Without Shelter. We just had a little run through. Uh, welcome to the 34th annual general meeting of Youth Without Shelter. Uh, this year's meeting is uh, somewhat unprecedented because of the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, we are coming to you via Zoom this evening. Um, I miss seeing many of you that uh, I always look forward to at annual general meetings uh, to have a chance to, to talk with you and reconnect every year, but um, we look forward to eventually down the road being able to see each other face to face. Uh, you'll see the parts of this meeting are pre-recorded and other parts are live. Um, just need to understand that some of the parts are recorded because we want to make sure sound quality was good and that uh, uh, for our youth performances and our uh, youth interactive pieces, we wanted to make sure that they were as comfortable as possible and take away any nerves. So those parts have been pre-recorded. We may have some technical glitches and delays. That is entirely possible. We're exceptional at running a shelter we're pretty average when it comes to being TV broadcasters. So we're gonna stick with, uh, with being shelter providers. Um, just know that this meeting is being recorded. There will be a link provided that will allow you to uh, uh, watch the meeting again, uh, if you would like to. And um, all of you are at this point, you are all muted. So if you have a question, um, please make sure that you type it into the chat box. And I think it's down here somewhere into the chat box and that will allow one of our staff to respond to a question uh, as soon as they can. So I want to uh, start off with uh, introducing uh, our chairman of our board, Moez Bouania, uh, as he welcomes you to the meeting. And then we'll hear from Ben Omaregi, uh, our incredible director of operations with the COVID-19 update. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for the introduction, Steve. I have to say I'm a little jealous that Steve still fits into his suit. I tried, but apparently six months not wearing one, I fit into none of them. Um, the meeting will now come to order. Welcome and thank you all for joining us for our first virtual annual general meeting. We promise to keep this uh, evening as engaging as possible, uh, acknowledging that we're all feeling a little bit zoomed out. A brief agenda for this evening is as follows. One of the past residents will perform Two of our current residents will share their stories. We will view photos from all the fun we have had in the past year. And we'll receive some important YWS updates and of course vote as we do at every annual general meeting. The development team has also prepared some interactive game uh, situations that I hope you will all participate in. And finally, we will wrap up the evening with a thank you to some board and committee members. Brittany and Anastasia from the development team will be working behind the scenes to help facilitate our event and Steve will act as secretary of the meeting. Please sit back and enjoy. I would like to now pass it over to Ben who will give us a short COVID-19 update. Hi everyone, good evening, and um, thank you for joining us today. My name is Ben Omorigi, I'm the Director of Operations at Youth Without Shelter. As we all know, the beginning of 2020 came with many challenges. In the shelter system, there was a need to get ahead of the COVID-19 pandemic and create a safe space for the most vulnerable population. The City of Toronto Shelter Support and Housing Administration in collaboration with Toronto Public Health and Inner City Health Associates provided daily directives to all shelter providers to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in shelters. The City of Toronto placed preventative measures to track and address community spread through the various cluster groups. Youth Without Shelter was part of the North Etobicoke cluster group. In March of 2020, our management team led by Steve Doherty met to implement a pandemic plan that would keep our shelter open as, a, as an essential service and address the health and safety of our residents and staff. Firstly, we had non-frontline staff working remotely from home to reduce the number of people within the facility at any given time. 
We stop accepting new admissions and we shut our doors to volunteers, including on-site counseling support. But we continue to refer our youth to meet remotely with counselors to address their mental health and well-being. We did stop approving late night, overnight, and weekend passes to mitigate the risks to our residents. The biggest challenge came with the closure of schools and daycare centers as staff with young children had to stay home to take care of their families. As a shelter that requires 24 hours staffing and support, it became evident to our entire team that we may have to wear different hats to address the pandemic. We were determined to keep providing a safe, stable, healthy environment for the residents that we serve. So despite knowing the risk of exposure, many of our dedicated hardworking staff worked multiple shifts in order to ensure that we could continue meeting the needs of our youth. And we implemented vital public health protocols in order to reassure everyone, staff, youth, and supporters that safety is paramount at our shelter. In April of 2020, we received further communication from the City of Toronto due to the changes in number of daily infections and increased cases in long-term care facilities. We received directives from Shelter Support Housing Administration to reduce our 53 bed capacity by 20 to promote physical distancing within the shelter. We work closely with the City of Toronto to assess housing initiatives available for you due to COVID-19 pandemic. And through the support of our housing and aftercare team, we were able to secure housing for 20 clients to meet capacity requirements. We eliminated triple rooms and bunk beds. Bed spacing was six feet apart with every youth assigned to single and double rooms. The City of Toronto site inspectors visited YWS to ascertain if the residents. The report showed that YWS is a low risk shelter and we are already doing a great job of implementing recommended contact precautions. We continue to enforce hand washing and social distancing measures upon entry into the shelter. We receive personal protective equipment, PPE, from all our supporters, from City of Toronto to community cluster groups to corporate partners and donors. We currently have a stockpile of PPE for staff and residents. In all of this, the YWS family work together as a unit to put safety first in everything we do. We continue to maintain one fight, one team approach during this pandemic. It has been a long road to say the least for staff and residents. However, there has been light at the end of the tunnel as we have so far not had an outbreak of COVID-19 in our shelter since the pandemic began. We all need to continue to follow public health guidelines and adhere strictly to the existing safety protocols that we have put in place. Thank you so much. We are all in this together. I will now pass the meeting over to Britt and Anastasia to take us down some memory lane. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. In past AGMs, we've had the opportunity to come together to hear more about the youth we serve here at YWS, watch them perform in the choir or present spoken word pieces, and of course, come together with our community to enjoy a delicious meal. Although we cannot come together in person this year, we have tried to include as many different elements into tonight's virtual AGM as possible, make it feel as though we were in fact sitting beside one another to support our youth. To start things off, we will first hear a testimonial written by one of our residential youth, read by a YWS staff member. Hi, my name is Brittany Bateman. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager here at YWS. Uh, we asked one of our residents, Lana, if she could write something to uh, talk about her experience with one of our uh, programs here at YWS, and she chose the employment program. So this is what she had to say. My name is Lana and this is my experience with the employment department at YWS. I've come a long way, a journey in my life that will bring me to new places and new faces and so much discovery for myself. Everyone goes on a path at some point in their life 
a path that leads them to a career that lights the fire of inspiration inside of them. I've been on that path for about five years so far and experienced new jobs that I enjoy. For example, a waitress, working at Costco, as well as making cups of coffee at Tim Hortons. Although these are not big roles like men and women have on Wall Street or doctors at the hospital, I truly enjoy bringing smiles and building bonds with my customers. I want to be that one person that brings them that bit of joy just in case they may have had a rough day that day. Sherry's been a big part of this journey. She helped me enhance and correct my resume, help with my job search, practice for interviews, and connected me to other programs that may teach me new life skills and experiences that I may need. She helped me get a position at Costco that I only wished for and thought it could never happen. I have recently landed a huge opportunity as a financial manager at a logistics service company, and it's all thanks to Sherry. Without her, I would have never gotten where I am today. I'm truly grateful for what she's done for me and everyone at Youth Without Shelter. Thank you so much to Lana for sharing your story with everyone. As Mo has mentioned, we would also like to share with you some photos tonight from our last fiscal year, highlighting our volunteers, donors and supporters. It truly takes a village to raise a child, or in our case, the youth that we serve daily here at YWS. And we could never do it without our donors and supporters. We hope you enjoy the following tribute to all of their amazing efforts. The community really engaged with us throughout the year. We had many different groups participate in community-based projects, like 407 ETR, who built cleaning care kits for our housing programme, and the Pavatar Fund came in in December to cook up an early morning breakfast. HP Inc. was another organisation that supported YWS through multiple projects throughout the year, from early morning breakfast to having a fun games night. Woodbine Entertainment Group helped to deliver candy grams, cook holiday meals and design bedrooms. Here we can see Faith of Life. This organisation is known at YWS for their amazing weekend breakfast. Also pictured, you can see Zuma Ashraf with an amazing donation of gift baskets for our youth. Sintaz helped to sort and package hy hygiene items, and Loyalty One helped us to redesign one of our bedrooms in the Stay in School residence. Publix helped to construct new bookshelves for our Judy LaRue library, and RBC came many times to cook delicious dinners. This year we saw Snapchat and Sherwin Williams giving us a helping hand with some paint. Starbucks came in for a great holiday breakfast and the Glenn Davis group came to cook for the youth for the first time. Michael Pimble Clemens Foundation is one group that has been a long time supporter of YWS, not only through their divine meals and holiday events and their social outings, but also through direct mentorship with our stay in school residents. SOS Design came in to prepare a Tex-Mex dinner and Patterson Outdoor made a delicious meal as well. Here's TMX giving us a helping hand and UPS came in to help get our clothing room in order. Here are some students from Humber College ensuring that every youth gets something for the holidays. And our friends at Mila made sandwiches to keep the youth fueled as they went to work and school. E4C 2020 was the last major live event for YWS. Here we can see Crescent School performing a spoken word performance at Spadina Station and a dance troupe from Father John Redmond performing live on CP24. Scotiabank was such a huge help to YWS this year and Soft Choice gave a big thumbs up after a great outdoor project. This summer, one major thing that we are missing is the annual Concert Properties Youth Engagement Day event. Residents and staff love this day and it can get a little competitive. Q&E's one day helped brighten our house and Avis and Young worked hard in our backyard to freshen it up for summer. E4S cooked some delicious chicken wings and Mosaic Transit flipped tasty burgers for everyone. Home Depot is another enthusiastic supporter of YWS. Team Depot has helped in many ways, such as transforming our garden and decorating for the holiday season. 
Doreen has similarly been an amazing supporter of YWS over the years, and we love to meet their new employees whenever they come in to help. And lastly, United Way opens YWS up to many different organisations throughout the year for their Days of Caring event. Thank you to all of our amazing volunteers and supporters for making so many fun memories this past year. We can't wait to see you all again once we are able to open our doors to the public once more. Now I'd like to share with you another youth testimonial written by a past YWS resident who moved out the summer into her own stable living. Hi, my name is Anastasia. I am the Volunteer and Engagement Specialist at Youth Without Shelter. I will be sharing Luna's story about her experience with the Stay in School program. I was first referred to YWS by a police officer after a family breakdown. I arrived feeling very scared as it was a new place and I did not know what my experience would be like. I arrived during the night and I'd never stayed at a shelter before. Upon arrival, I was greeted by the staff and they helped me get settled in. They gave me hygiene supplies and some new bed sheets. When I came to YWS, I did not know how to speak or read English. The staff tried to explain things as best as they could and make me feel comfortable. The following morning, I was able to speak with a staff who knew Korean and she was able to fully explain the setup of YWS. This made me feel more comfortable and excited to adapt to my new environment. A few months after my arrival, I was enrolled in high school with the assistance of staff. I was then referred to the Stay in School program to support me with my schooling. Sorry about the technical difficulties, everybody. We'll be back just shortly. And to meet new people. I stayed on SIS for a total of two and a half years. And during this time, I was supported and encouraged by staff. They supported me with my immigration process, my journey to receiving my PR card. The staff were always approachable and willing to offer counseling supports. They were also able to refer to me to different agencies in which fit my needs. I was given school supplies as needed and I was able to receive hygiene supplies. SIS offered me an environment to continue my schooling, learn English, and make new friends. It offered a cooperative environment and was a program which fit my needs. Soon it was time for my chapter, SIS, to end as I was aging out. I was very nervous for my new chapter and how it would play out. The staff at SIS expressed their confidence in my ability to live independently. Currently, I'm living on my own apartment and I'm looking forward to continuing my schooling in the fall. I'm very grateful for the support YWS has offered me along my journey, and I will use all the useful skills I've learned in my new beginning. Thank you so much, Luna, for having the courage to share your story with us. We know how difficult this can be, so we truly appreciate helping all of us understand what youth experiencing homelessness have to overcome. As Mo has promised, we would now like to invite you all to participate in a short interactive game to test your knowledge and learn a little bit more about the impact our supporters have had and the accomplishments we've made this year. I would like to introduce Mike Burnett, our agent specialist who will walk you through this game. Thank you everyone for attending such an amazing event. I'd like to take this time to take you through a few activities to help highlight some of the amazing successes YWS has experienced over the last few years. We're hoping to challenge you a little bit during these activities to answer these questions independently. School can be hard, especially for youth that are at risk or currently experiencing homelessness. Let's take some time to match up the numeric value in column A to the sentence in column B. Now let's give everybody about 30 seconds to figure this one out.
All right, let's see how everyone did. So one in five shelter users in Canada currently are youth. One in three youth experiencing homelessness are able to graduate high school. This is in comparison to nine in 10 youth with a safe home that are able to graduate high school. This really highlights the important work that our stay in school program does on an everyday basis. Changing activities slightly. For an activity number two here, here you fill in the blanks with the correct numeric value on your screen. Again, I'll give everybody 30 seconds to figure this one out. Now let's give you the answers. This past year, YWS has seen 2,390 different one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions that were held just in the emergency residency alone. If we were to add in the Stay in School program, YWS has conducted a total of 3,251 different one-on-one -on -one sessions. 511 is the total number of employment supports given out to youth this year, which leaves an impressive 1,931 meetings and assessments with the Toronto Housing and Professionals Supports and Landlords. These are some of the reasons why YWS has been so successful over this last year. In our final activity for this evening, I'd like to test your knowledge through a quick game of true and false. On your screen, you will see four statements about YWS. It's up to you to determine whether or not this statement is true or false. Now, I know this one is a bit hard, but I can still give you 30 seconds to figure this one out. And for the final big reveal of the evening. So out of 884 youth educated by the YWS Educational Outreach Program, it is a true statement that 3.7% of them did disclose issues of homelessness. The previous year, it was about 1.5% total. Thus, we had actually seen an increase of about 2.2% of the youth coming forward to our educational outreach program. 5,000 eggs cracked in our volunteers program is way under the statement. This past year, we'd seen over 12,000 different eggs cracked in our kitchen this year. You individuals were able to equip our youth with 175 different backpacks to ensure that every youth going back to school was able to get the supplies that they did need. Now, 500 different life skills sessions delivered is a very low number, considering we were over double this. 1,130 different one-on-one -on -one sessions is what we were able to run just this year in our life skills program at YWS. Absolutely amazing work, everyone. I'd like to take this moment to thank everyone for participating in our activities. I hope that you are able to take away a little bit more information about the great work that is done here at YWS every day. All right, well, thank you very much for everyone that put that together. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Uh, some of those are challenges to uh, really see, you know, the, the extent of what happens around here. Now, I'm gonna reflect on the uh, 
2019-2020 uh, year. During that period, I want to make a, a point that only two of those weeks involved the lockdown at the time for the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. I don't want to flavor the entire year because of COVID-19. It, it's, it's already impacting uh, the, the 2021 year. And as you heard from Ben, we've done incredible things in a partnership with the folks that we support and our frontline staff members to really pull this together in a true partnership. I believe Ben called it a, a family. We pulled together as a team. We were all in this together. So I want to thank uh, all of our incredible uh, staff members and the amazing youth that we support here every day uh, for their dedication to safety. A few things to talk about. We had a strategic plan that we were heading into uh, after year one. We had some ideas and we had some targets that we wanted to meet. I want to report back on that strategic plan. Just remember that it's a, it's a five-year plan that we want to move 500 people in five years into stable living. A um, few things that we, I want to highlight. We enhanced our clinical services and our mental health supports um, through partnerships with Inner City Health Associates and Dr. Patel. We're able to get weekly psychiatry meetings taking place here on site. And also uh, through our new, our new clinical consultant, Randy Stevenson, um, we've been able to offer even more clinical supports for the folks that need it. We know that mental health is, a, is something that impacts people's uh, ability to, to reach their fullest potential. Um, we're working very hard to do that. We continued on uh, during the Uh, there's also availability of uh, substance abuse counseling, uh, as well as other counseling services that are taking place under, uh, under our roof. We really wanted to develop a wraparound services. So um, we've improved outcomes by making sure that we give people the most chances and the most opportunities to reduce the barriers in their lives, including mental health and addictions. I want to talk about our development and engagement team. Really incredible job. As part of the strategic plan, we had decided that we were going to be committed to um, creating the team that was best suited towards our needs. Less than 50% of our annual operating budget comes from the city of Toronto. That means that our incredible development and engagement team are responsible for bringing in almost over half of our annual budget. We can't do this without our incredible partnerships with our corporate partners, with our private donors, and, and with all of you. We've enhanced the team and we're finding now that it's beginning to pay off dividends. We also, during the development team, I wanna acknowledge that Judy LaRue came back to help us out briefly. Um, and she was always one of the champions that we had for increasing the size of development and engagement. Um, and we were smart, we took her advice. So we looked at the advice of our focus groups and our research and we found that we're getting to where we need to be. I also want to talk a little bit about our housing and employment and life skills programs. Ben talked about the fact that since the pandemic, we've had 20 people housed. This is the stuff that our housing people are doing every single day, dedicating themselves to not only making sure that people have the opportunity to find housing, but making sure to the best of their ability that they can remain housed with the resources that are required to help them through. Life skills and employment. We believe not in just in giving people a job. Instead, we want to provide them with the skills that are necessary, not only to be successful in life, but to be successful in their acquisition of employment, long-term sustainable employment. So hats off to all the, the supports that we have around YWS here every day. Now I want to talk about our incredible fundraising efforts. Uh, Cover Me Urban. Last year in 2019, we had the amazing experience of moving uh, Cover Me Urban to the rec room. Uh, the re what an outstanding job that they did in helping us and a terrific event completely organized and run by volunteers. And that's what's really important is to understand that these are volunteers giving their time, organizing and doing everything. It was an amazing event that I've had friends come up to me afterwards and said, I've been to hundreds of fundraisers. You need to go out and teach people how to do this. This is the best I've ever been to. And I would tend to agree. Uh, it was also Time for Change. It was our 10th uh, anniversary for Time for Change. There used to be tokens for change when we started. And we wondered if, if 10 years, is that the time to move on to something else? But what we realized this year is it's awfully tough shoes to fill. The ability that people have with our army of volunteers that help us out that day to go out with a cup in their hand 
to ask for money from strangers in the subway and TTC stops in the path. The ability to experience being invisible and being ignored by others is one that only Time for Change allows. It's an incredible experience. What it will look like in the future, we don't know, but we don't want to lose out on that ability to gain empathy for the folks that we support. Our army of volunteers, you saw a slideshow. Now, since COVID-19, we haven't been able to bring in volunteers, which is unfortunate. We miss them. So instead, improvise, adapt, and overcome. We had volunteers off-site making meals and delivering them to us, bringing in the things that we need and delivering. Incredible. That's the dedication of volunteers and that's the generosity of the GTA when it comes to supporting youth without shelter. I want to highlight a few things. One is the stay in school program. Last June 2019, out of 20 residents, we had 11 high school graduates, which is amazing. And what happened to the other nine? They're still in process. They're still getting there. Out of those 11, we had multiple Ontario scholars and multiple award recipients for the highest marks in each of their classes that they took. It's absolutely incredible. We focus here on equality of opportunity, doing our absolute best to remove all of the barriers that exist to allow people to find out what their fullest potential can be. It's equality of opportunity. We strive for that. Stay in school is an amazing example of that. Over the past two years, we're having an 82% graduation rate. Absolutely unheard of. And it speaks to the dedication of the staff members that work and stay in school every single day. Before I leave, I do want to thank all of the board members for their tireless work and their efforts as volunteers, all of the volunteer members of all of our committees for everything that you do. We can't do what YWS does without the amazing volunteers that help support us every single day. To our donors, both corporate and private, thank you. It's a heartfelt thank you. I want to pass the microphone over now to uh, Moez to uh, give us a board update. Thank you. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, first of all, I have to say, sometimes a uh, pandemic like this uh, highlights um, some of the uh, unrealized potential of people. And I gotta say, Steve, has quite the radio voice and uh, he really projects well. So I think we've got to get him doing more of these podcast type things. Um, you know, before I get into the uh, formal part of the AGM, I did want to say that when we were doing the interactive part of the game, I actually got an answer wrong too. Um, being the accountant in the room, um, I saw there was 2,400 counseling sessions. I'm like, there's no way that's right. Even when I do the math now, that's amazing. That's six counseling sessions, one-on-one -on -one per day. Um, so even when I think I know uh, the impact that this organization is having, I really, um, you know, learn a little bit more every day. Uh, one other thing I wanted to share was uh, before I came here, my daughter, um, six-year-old uh, at home, she was asking me like, dad, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to the shelter. Uh, she always comes with us to the AGM pretty much since she was like one year old. Um, so she's probably watching this. Um, and, you know, these are the things that we miss. But I'm, I'm thankful uh, that, you know, we have the folks that we do in the room here and for all of you watching at home. Um, also, I'll say when we describe the accomplishments of our youth, usually the room is like roaring, there's laughter, there is clapping. Um, we don't have that happening right now, but I can definitely sense that at home. Hopefully folks are smiling and laughing and feeling uh, the pride that we're feeling for, um, you know, our folks here. So with that, um, on to some official AGM matters. Uh, so notice calling the meeting was sent to the members on August 13th, 2020. And I request that a copy of this notice be kept with the record of this meeting. I can see that a quorum is present and therefore I propose to proceed with the business of the meeting. Due to limitations pro uh, posed by Zoom, all members present at YWS will be voting in person. Everyone joining us via Zoom who donated more than $25 or volunteered for more than 10 hours can raise their virtual hand, the hand icon on the bottom of your screen, should they wish to express a concern. I request that the secretary table the minutes of the annual meeting of members held on September 12th, 2019. Unless someone wishes to have them read, I will call on Tracy Irwin to propose motion that the minutes be taken as read and approved. Thank you, Tracy. 
The next item of business is the presentation of the consolidated financial statements of the corporation as of March 31st, 2020, and the auditor's report thereon. A condensed version is in your annual report, which was emailed to you prior to the AGM in a PDF format. Should you have any concerns regarding these, please type your comments and our treasurer, Kerry McGrath, will respond to your inquiry. Great. Um, with that, I'm excited to proceed with the election of uh, board of directors for the coming year. Um, we've got some uh, new folks on, on our board and I'm excited about that. So 12 directors are now to be elected. I now declare the meeting open for nominations. I will call on Tracy Irwin to move the nominations. Thank you, Moes. Mr. Chair, I have the pleasure of nominating Carrie McGrath as the incoming chair, Ray Baki, Halinka Dibka, Abbas Kassam, Sarah Robertson, Tony Small, Kelly Wilson, Anthony Batista, Leanne Anderson, Alyssa, pardon me, I know I pronounced that incorrectly. I even practiced this before the meeting. That's Alisa Shivji, Minerva Sadler Gray, Great, thank you, Tracy. Um, if there are no further nominations, Tracy, can you move that the nominations are closed? Yes, thank you. I move that the nominations are closed. All in favor? Okay, I think everybody needs to put their hand up. Thank you. <laughs> By show of hands, we have unanimous consent. I now declare that Kerry McGrath, Ray Backey, Halinka Dipka, Abbas Kassam, Sarah Robertson, Tony Small, Kelly Wilson, Anthony Batista, Leanne Anderson, Alisa Shivji, Minerva Sadler Gray, and Laura Awasanya have been duly elected directors of the corporation by acclamation to hold office until the next annual meeting of members or until their successors or duly elected or appointed. I would especially like to welcome our new members, Alisa Shivji, Minerva Sadler Gray, and Laura Awasanya, as well as our new advisory board member, Carol Latimer, to YWS. We are looking forward to working with all of you. Um, in addition, it is my absolute pleasure to pass on the duties, well, I'm, I'm a little bit sad, but I would say it's definitely a pleasure because of who I'm passing it to, <laughs> um, the duties as the board chair to Carrie McGrath, who has been a, uh, working with Youth Without Shelter as a board vice chair and treasurer for the past year and a half. Not only has Carrie been an outstanding board member, she has also been a leading development and engagement committee member, helping to ensure that our time for change and Cover Me Urban events are planned and executed flawlessly. Uh, thank you, Carrie, for all your contribution and dedication to YWS. So when I point out Carrie, so there you go. Um, and before I get booted way off the podium, um, I did wanna say thank you um, to YWS, to my fellow board members, um, and to uh, the management team here for putting up with me for the last 10 years um, on the board. Uh, it's been a fantastic learning experience for me and an opportunity. Um, it's been a constant in my life, actually, as I think about it. I've changed homes twice, changed jobs three times, had two children, um, but YWS has been there. And I will continue to, um, uh, you know, be involved with the organization. Uh, and so I'm excited to see what the future holds uh, for Youth Without Shelter. Uh, with that, we will now proceed with the appointment of auditors and the authorization of the directors to fix their remunerations. Carrie McGrath has a motion in this matter. Thank you, Moet. I move that directors be authorized to appoint auditors for fiscal year 2020, 
to 2021, and that the directors also be authorized to fix their remuneration. All right, all in favor? By show of hands, we have a unanimous consent. All members have voted in favor. This completes the official part of our meeting, and I would now like to say goodbye to a few of our board and committee members who shared their time with YWS over the past several years. Thank you. We'd like to take a quick moment to thank the members of our board and committee who are stepping down this year. You have done so much for the youth we serve and you will be greatly missed. We asked a few of your fellow board and committee members to reflect on your commitment to YWS over the years, and this is what they had to say. Moez joined the board of directors of YWS in 2010. During his time with us, Moez has devoted himself to the betterment of YWS and ultimately to the betterment of those we support. His thoughtful manner and calm demeanor proved to be the perfect fit for the position of chair. For over six years, Moez led this talented and dedicated group as they supported the work of YWS. The support of Moez, his family and friends, and countless contacts of his is indicative of the generosity of his spirit. Thank you from all of us here at YWS. Please stand by everybody, just a few technical issues. The support of Moez, his family and friends, and countless contacts of his is indicative of the generosity of his spirit. Thank you from all of us here at YWS. In 2013, Tracy joined the board of directors. Since that time, she became the secretary of the board. It is hard to overstate how important this role is. Keeping us all on track and up to date is vital to the oversight required to continue the operations of YWS. Tracy was a tireless volunteer, giving freely and generously of her time in so many ways. Whether assisting on projects or as a T4C canvasser, Tracy was always there. Her wonderful manner and insight were a great combination that always made you feel as though you were heard and respected. Thank you, Tracy, for all you have done supporting our goal of ending youth homelessness. Vivian first came to YWS in 2011 to donate food following an event she had catered and has been an active member of the YWS team ever since. Joining the Development and Engagement Committee in 2012, Vivian went on to be one of the founding co-chairs of Cover Me Urban. Over the years, Vivian has been a tremendous ambassador for YWS, sharing our fundamental values at events, volunteer affairs, and in the community at large. We wish Vivian all the best and know that she will always be a part of the YWS family. Heidi was first introduced to YWS in late 2011, and we have been so fortunate to have her enthusiasm and can-do, will-do attitude on our committee over the years. Heidi has never failed to support YWS and to promote our mission among her friends and colleagues. She has been on hand for events, to help around the shelter, on holiday campaigns, and on T4C. We will miss her unfailing smile and joyous good nature, but know she will never be far away if and when we need her. Although Lisa is stepping down from our Development and Engagement Committee, she has taken a position within YWS as our major gifts manager. Here are a few words from Kerry reflecting on their relationship over the years. Lisa has been an excellent member of the development team. We have had many fun adventures together, from selecting games and prizes for player one, 
to being at Mason Mercer and the Rec Room, and as co-chairs planning our Cover Me Urban events, to the Money Room for Time for Change. Lisa is a take charge person with excellent planning skills, and she will be missed by the committee. Thankfully, she is still with YWS. We would like to conclude this evening by sharing a special thank you from Kyle, a former resident. Kyle, also known as Blues World in the music industry, has written a special song of thanks to all of the staff, supporters, and board and committee members of YWS. Wow, that was what an incredible way to uh, end our AGM this evening. Um, on behalf of myself, the staff team, board of directors, and the volunteers, uh, I want to thank all of you for participating uh, in the AGM this evening. And a special shout out has to go to the philanthropy and engagement team. We are not television producers. Yes. Improvise, adapt, and overcome has been our motto. And once again, the philanthropy and engagement team stepped up and did an outstanding job. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing all of you in person next year. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, concerns, a link to the recorded version of the meeting will be made available to all of you. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to echo what Steve said. Thank you to the team. I have trouble on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call pretty much every day for them to get through an hour with people probably across the country. Um, only if folks uh, on the line could see actually what's going on here. We've got this room, then there's a control room uh, somewhere else, and there's about three people relaying messages to each other. It's pretty awesome. Um, so I think, Steve, you undersell what, what your uh, you know, team can do in terms of uh, a video conferencing. So thank you again to all of our supporters. Um, as Steve said, we can't wait to have you back with us here um, in the shelter, but uh, appreciate your support uh, from afar for now. Thank you, everyone.